the astronauts were rubbed down with a sodium hypochlorite solution in Columbia wiped with povidone iodine to remove any lunar dust that might be present. The astronauts were winched on board the recovery helicopter. Biggs were worn until they reached isolation facilities on board Hornet. After touchdown on Hornet at 1753 Coordinated Universal Time, the helicopter was lowered by the elevator into the hangar bay, where the astronauts walked the 30 feet to the mobile quarantine facility, where they would begin the Earth-based portion of their 21 days of quarantine. After Nixon departed, Hornet was brought alongside the five short-ton Columbia, which was lifted aboard by the ship's crane, placed on a dolly and moved next to the MQF. It was then attached to the MQF with a flexible tunnel, allowing the lunar samples, film, data tapes and other items to be removed. Hornet returned to Pearl Harbor, where the MQF was loaded onto a Lockheed C-141 Starlifter and airlifted to the Manned Spacecraft Center. The astronauts arrived at the Lunar Receiving Laboratory at 10 o'clock Coordinated Universal Time on July 28. Columbia was taken to Ford Island for deactivation, and its pyrotechnics made safe. In accordance with the Extraterrestrial Exposure Law, a set of regulations promulgated by NASA on July 16 to codify its quarantine protocol, the astronauts continued in quarantine. After three weeks in confinement, the astronauts were given a clean bill of health. On August 10, 1969, the Interagency Committee on Back Contamination met in Atlanta and lifted the quarantine on the astronauts, on those who had joined them in quarantine, and on Columbia itself. Loose equipment from the spacecraft remained in isolation until the lunar samples were released for study. On August 13, the three astronauts rode in ticker tape parades in their honor in New York and Chicago, with an estimated 6 million attendees. Nixon and Agnew honored each astronaut with a presentation of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. The three astronauts spoke before a joint session of Congress on September 16, 1969. This celebration began a 38-day world tour that brought the astronauts to 22 foreign countries and included visits with the leaders of many countries. Humans walking on the moon and returning safely to Earth accomplished Kennedy's goal set eight years earlier. In mission control during the Apollo 11 landing, Kennedy's speech flashed on the screen, followed by the words, task accomplished, July 1969. The success of Apollo 11 demonstrated the United States. Columbia was moved in 2017 to the NASM Mary Baker Ingen Restoration Hangar at the Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center in Chantilly, Virginia, to be readied for a four-city tour titled Destination Moon, the Apollo 11 mission. Continued renovations at the Smithsonian allowed time for an additional stop for the capsule, and it was moved to the Cincinnati Museum Center. For 40 years Armstrong's and Aldrin spacesuits were displayed in the museum's Apollo to the Moon exhibit, until it permanently closed on December 3, 2018, to be replaced by a new gallery which was scheduled to open in 2022. A special display of Armstrong's suit was unveiled for the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11 in July 2019. The quarantine trailer, the flotation collar and the flotation bags are in the Smithsonian's Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center Annex near Washington Dulles International Airport in Chantilly, Virginia, where they are on display along with a test lunar module. The descent stage of the LM Eagle remains on the moon. In 2009, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter imaged the various Apollo landing sites on the surface of the Moon, for the first time with sufficient resolution to see the descent stages of the lunar modules, scientific instruments, and foot trails made by the astronauts. The remains of the ascent stage lie at an unknown location on the lunar surface, after being abandoned and impacting the Moon. The location is uncertain because Eagle ascent stage was not tracked after it was jettisoned, and the lunar gravity field is sufficiently non-uniform to make the orbit of the spacecraft unpredictable after a short time. In March 2012 a team of specialists financed by Amazon founder Jeff Bezos located the F-1 engines from the SIC stage that launched Apollo 11 into space. His team brought parts of two of the five engines to the surface. In July 2013, a conservator discovered a serial number under the rust on one of the engines raised from the Atlantic, which NASA confirmed was from Apollo 11. The SIVB third stage which performed Apollo 11's translunar injection remains in a solar orbit near to that of Earth. The main repository for the Apollo moon rocks is the Lunar Sample Laboratory facility at the Lyndon B. Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. For safekeeping, there is also a smaller collection stored at White Sands Test Facility near Las Cruces, New Mexico. Most of the rocks are stored in nitrogen to keep them free of moisture. They are handled only indirectly, using special tools. Over 100 research laboratories worldwide conduct studies of the samples, approximately 500 samples are prepared and sent to investigators every year. In November 1969, 
Nixon asked NASA to make up about 250 presentation Apollo 11 lunar sample displays for 135 nations, the 50 states of the United States in its possessions, and the United Nations. The rice-sized particles were four small pieces of moon soil weighing about 50 milligrams and were enveloped in a clear acrylic button about as big as a United States half-dollar coin. This acrylic button magnified the grains of lunar dust. Nixon gave the Apollo 11 lunar sample displays as goodwill gifts in 1970. The passive seismic experiment ran until the command uplink failed on August 25, 1969. As of 2018, the lunar laser ranging experiment remains operational. Armstrong's Hasselblad camera was thought to be lost or left on the moon's surface. In 2015, after Armstrong died in 2012, his widow contacted the National Air and Space Museum to inform them she had found a white cloth bag in one of Armstrong's closets. The bag contained various items, which should have been left behind in the lunar module, including the 16mm data acquisition camera that had been used to capture images of the first moon landing. The camera is currently on display at the National Air and Space Museum. On July 15, 2009, Life.com released a photo gallery of previously unpublished photos of the astronauts taken by Life photographer Ralph Morse prior to the Apollo 11 launch. From July 16 to 24, 2009, NASA streamed the original mission audio on its website in real-time 40 years to the minute after the events occurred. It is in the process of restoring the video footage and has released a preview of key moments. In July 2010, air-to-ground voice recordings and film footage shot in mission control during the Apollo 11 powered descent and landing was re-synchronized and released for the first time. The John F. Kennedy Presidential Library and Museum set up an Adobe Flash website that rebroadcasts the transmissions of Apollo 11 from launch to landing on the moon. We expect that there is, as we speak, another generation of kids out there who are looking up at the sky and are going to be the next Armstrong, Collins, and Aldrin, Obama said. We want to make sure that NASA is going to be there for them when they want to take their journey. On August 7, 2009, an act of Congress awarded the three astronauts a Congressional Gold Medal, the highest civilian award in the United States. A group of British scientists interviewed as part of the anniversary events reflected on the significance of the moon landing. It was carried out in a technically brilliant way with risks taken. That would be inconceivable in the risk-averse world of today. The Apollo program is arguably the greatest technical achievement of mankind to date. Nothing since Apollo has come close to the excitement that was generated by those astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin and the 10 others who followed them. On June 10, 2015, Congressman Bill Posey introduced Resolution H.R. 2726 to the 114th session of the United States House of Representatives directing the United States Mint to design and sell commemorative coins in gold, silver and clad for the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission. On January 24, 2019, the Mint released the Apollo 11 50th anniversary commemorative coins to the public on its website. A documentary film, Apollo 11, with restored footage of the 1969 event, premiered in IMAX on March 1, 2019, and broadly in theaters on March 8. The Smithsonian Institute's National Air and Space Museum and NASA sponsored the Apollo 50 Festival on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. The three-day outdoor festival featured hands-on exhibits and activities, live performances, and speakers such as Adam Savage and NASA scientists. As part of the festival, a projection of the 363-foot-tall Saturn V rocket was displayed on the east face of the 555-foot-tall Washington Monument from July 16 through the 20th from 9.30 p.m. until 11.30 p.m. The program also included a 17-minute show that combined full-motion video projected on the Washington Monument to recreate the assembly and launch of the Saturn V rocket. The projection was joined by a 40-foot-wide recreation of the Kennedy Space Center countdown clock and two large video screens showing archival footage to recreate the time leading up to the moon landing. There were three shows per night on July 19-20, with the last show on Saturday, delayed slightly so the portion where Armstrong first set foot on the moon would happen exactly 50 years to the second after the actual event. On July 19, 2019, the Google Doodle paid tribute to the Apollo 11 moon landing complete with a link to an animated YouTube video with voiceover by astronaut Michael Collins. Aldrin, Collins, and Armstrong's sons were hosted by President Donald Trump in the Oval Office.